Welcome to Leadership Blog, which is a podcast for the Air Force Lifecycle Management Center community on topics of interest. And our topic of interest today is augmented reality and virtual reality. So we're going to talk with Taylor Ruffin from the Rapid Sustainment Office to learn a little bit more about it. Uh, Taylor, if you could give us a, an idea, introduce yourself and give us a little bit of your career background, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Taylor Ruffin. I'm the lead product manager uh, for all AR, VR efforts, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality efforts at the Rapid Sustainment Office. Um, I've been in this role for about a year and a half, uh, so still filling it out. Um, my team is pretty new too, so you know we're in the storming and norming phases of our, 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 our team. Um, prior to this, I was in combat rescue helicopter, and then uh, prior to that, I was in um, <clears throat> simulators directorate working the C-130 JMATS program. Um, I am a product of the Palace Acquired program, so straight out of school, um, I uh, was entered into the rotational program. And uh, so I did three years rotation. And then the Rabbit Sustainment Office ended up being my uh, final placement. Where I've been for the past year and a half, so. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, so, uh, so you're young and you're making a difference already. That's, uh, that's really exciting. We're uh, trying to, trying to. <laughs> So give us a, let's start at the top with an overview. Just give us a basic understanding of what uh, AR, VR is. Yeah. So when we're talking about virtual reality um, amongst my team, we're really talking about a fully immersive experience. Um, and, and it's really where you're in a computer generated virtual environment. And um, we associate virtual reality really with uh, training because it allows us to work in a high fidelity virtual environment. So we don't really have to uh, take down aircraft, which we know um, is relatively costly to us. And it allows for uh, practice on high criticality, low frequency tasks uh, before actually manipulating expensive equipment. So for example, things like uh, doing a complete engine change. Uh, in, in my mind, I wouldn't want my airmen to go out there on the flight line and you know, the first time seeing an engine is when they're trying to do an engine change on the flight line. You know. In theory, we want them to go through the virtual reality module and be able to practice those steps to be ready. When we talk about augmented reality, really we're talking about um, uh, being able to alter the view of the real world. And, and really that's done by using uh, virtual, virtual overlays or uh, images or graphics and it alters the way we actually see the world. So in our team, when we talk about augmented reality, um, we're really talking about providing the capability to put contextually uh, reference information um, in front of the airmen and then provide, you know, sort of a digital window uh, for maintainers, um, you, you know, while they're actually performing maintenance. So augmented reality gives them a sort of like a heads up display capability. And this allows them to digitally capture what they're doing and then, you know, alleviate the need to be flipping through like uh, different like reference documents and, you know, trying to uh, remember what, you know, they learned in training like seven, eight years ago. So AR <clears throat> really gives you access to digitally connected resources, uh, the resources right in front of you. And, and then hopefully there would be some sort of artificial intelligence in the background, um, helping airmen stay on task and, and collect information as well. Mm -hmm. So this is like uh, Tony Stark when he's in the Iron Man suit and he sees the, all the data that's kind of like surrounding what he's, what he's, it's, it's like that, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Some of, you know, some of our greatest, you know, like superhero or, or science fiction movies are, are a catalyst for, you know, driving where technology should be going. Sure. Okay. Uh, so what's, uh, what's the team's vision for AR, VR? Uh, and what are, what are some of your goals with it? Yeah. So I, I think, at a higher level, really we're trying to reshape how we think about maintenance. And we kind to, we, we'd like to refer to the phrase cognitive augmentation because we're really getting down to how do we approach maintenance? So specifically for my team, I think our main hope is that uh, ARVR grows to be a minimal essential asset in the mission um, and that it really provides a safer and inexpensive training opportunity and a more in-depth tracking capability of human performance, and um, ultimately augments how airmen execute maintenance. So long-term, the ideal situation would be that every airman has access to a no-code or low-code uh, virtual reality training solution in even the most remote areas. And these are the areas where maybe airmen don't really get the opportunity to train on aircraft as much. And then for AR, uh, really 
the thought there would be to provide digital access to technical data, uh, remote calling capabilities when they need to reach engineering SMEs, um, and then have access to automated maintenance logs and workflows that help cut down on some of the redundancy of maintenance work and ultimately increase readiness. Um, so ideally, we'd be creating you know, some sort of uh, cloud-based tools to help enable um, airmen to innovate, and uh, the content will all be organically owned. Hardware would be agnostic, allowing for plug and play opportunities. Um, and then that all would be supported and improved um, by an improved uh, enterprise network infrastructure that supports the rapid deployment and sustainment of that technology. So to kind of sum that up, we really just, we're, we're trying to increase cognitive retention um, that eventually will lead to a reduction in aircraft downtime and then you know helps to increase um, readiness on the flight line when it comes to real life operations. So maybe if, an, if a maintainer's got a task to do that he may have not done before or maybe hadn't done very often, um, you could go in beforehand, mm -hmm. practice it a couple of times in the virtual environment and then go out on the actual aircraft. And so ideally get the, done, the job done quicker um, and a little bit more effectively. Absolutely, absolutely. And that all helps to drive down cost as well. Okay. And then like uh, from the from the augmented standpoint, you know, you could be standing out there with your goggles and if you need to see a reference from a TO or something like that, um, that could maybe pull up on the side um, to remind you to take a certain step or, or, or some sort of data like that that you could pull back. Absolutely. And we've seen things where people embed videos in augmented reality as well. So, you know, like uh, my engineer always likes to say, you know, when he's working on his car, the first thing he does is pull up some YouTube videos. So ideally, AR would have some sort of video capability there where you can actually walk through step by step in a video while watching a video while doing maintenance as well. Yeah, wow, that's really fascinating. That's uh, you can see the benefits of something like that. Uh, like you said, in terms of, of downtime, you know. Um, so what is what are some of the big challenges that you see right now? Ooh, uh, <laughs> ARVR has quite a few challenges, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to give you some of the, the top ones that I've seen. Um, I think at the highest level, um, we're looking at a challenge with culture shift. Uh, so we're definitely introducing technology um, and not just within AR, VR tech focus, but in the rapid sustainment office as a whole. Um, we're introducing technology that is completely disruptive in the way that we um, currently execute traditional acquisition. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with change comes a lot of pushback and a lot of skepticism, but um, in order for innovation to really work, there has to be support from all levels, but um, really the highest levels, um, both verbal support and monetary support. Um, and, and that's a little difficult um, to advocate for, for new technology, when the data to prove uh, return on investment just hasn't fully emerged yet because it's so new. Um, yeah. So, um, the second one I'd say is it's really um, stepping into digital acquisition uh, or the digital acquisition world. And that's in relation to access to tech data and data rights. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You know, while, while the future desire is to own uh, the tech stack, I don't, I don't know if you've read um, Take the Red Pill by Dr. Roper, but that's, that, that's one of his goals is for us to right. own the tech stack. Um, right now, if, you know, we don't, and, and it's kind of a cumbersome process trying to get access to clean data at a reasonable cost um, and without compromising that data to really make ARVR a complete digital resource. Um, there's so much more we can do if we can actually have access to that tech data um, and, and, and that will uh, ultimately help us you know support our paradigm shift that we're trying to push here. Opportunities like integration of digital twins uh, from legacy and future weapon systems um, are really the push we need to push the bounds of AR and VR and show how valuable it is. Um, <clears throat> and then I have two more for you. Um, so the next one, addressing environmental concerns. Um, I think this one's pretty simple. Um, you know, maintenance is done everywhere. Um, so we need to be able to support our airmen everywhere. Um, the hardware that we have really needs to be able to um, withstand varying degrees of weather, you know, in rain, sleet, um, and, and so we really need um, hardware and software that's going to be able to uh, withstand those environments. And then the last one I'd say, um, which is always a buzzword, is, is, is cyber resiliency or, or connectivity. Right. Um, right. I'm sorry? No, right. right. No, I... Yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I was saying, uh, you know, being that this is um, new technology, 
the infrastructure to support the longevity of AR VR just isn't there yet. Um, it hasn't been established. And, and really, honestly, um, it's difficult to fully wrap your head around uh, how the ATO process or the cybersecurity process will really need to evolve um, when addressing this type of technology. Um, I, I think the big question we ask ourselves usually is, how do we support open architecture um, while still creating a secure environment? Um, you know, we have to have cyber resilient systems from hardware, um, from all the way from hardware, you know, putting on, you know, some uh, some uh, glasses to uh, all the way to our repositories in the cloud. Um, so the entire infrastructure has to be able to handle various degrees of connectivity. So cyber resiliency is something that we're always concerned about. And you mentioned that as, as being one of the challenges there. Um, you know, obviously you've got to make sure that the data became, is protected uh, so that when maintainers pull this data, it's accurate. Um, how are you working to ensure that something that's cloud-based and easily accessible remains secure and, and, and uh, trustworthy? Yeah. Um, I think really the thing we're doing at this point, again, our, our team is new and our strategy is, is still new. Um, I think we're just keeping our cybersecurity um, liaison um, in lockstep with everything that we do. So every time we have a new capability that we're trying to roll out, every time we have a new user that we're trying to connect with, um, we really make sure that our cybersecurity person is in a lot of those meetings so that they're able to fully grasp the type of connectivity that we need. Um, and not only just within our team, but we're also looking at um, uh, making sure that we're uh, working with other organizations, be that Air Force or, you know, the entire DOD who are already trying to solve these same issues or who have already provided some of the um, solutions to some of the problems we're looking at in terms of cyber resiliency. Yeah. So baking it in from the ground floor, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Absolutely. So what are some of the things that excite you most concerning this technology? Um, I am excited just to see this technology um, evolve. We're still very, very early um, in the years of AR and VR, and there's still so much growth opportunity. But I think I'm most excited um, really to see how scenarios and environments become uh, more immersive as we move towards, you know, things like full body haptic feedback and to actually start to mirror some of the favorite science fiction movies as we were talking about earlier, you know, seeing things like us going from like YouTube video clips to like holograms. Um, and then I think also I'm interested to see how we navigate the integration of digital threads and digital twins um, and workflow processes. Um, I, I know that's something specifically Air, Air Force is moving towards. Um, you know, there's, there's an opportunity there to um, help novices and experts and, and decrease bureaucracy and, and, you know, ultimately give more time back to our maintainers to do work since maintenance is really our focus. Um, but I, I guess I'll kind of change it. So I think the actual thing I'm, I'm most excited to see is really what our airmen will do after we put these tools into their hands and really get to see how they themselves transform um, the Air Force when they're given good tools. All right. Uh, so have you seen any uh, results from current projects so far? And if, and if so, uh, are they significant or? Yeah, so we've actually received a lot of positive feedback and excitement from our users um, regarding many of our solutions. And uh, we've already started implementing some follow-on work for expanding capabilities um, and, and expanding those to multiple faces and uh, testing out the operational capabilities. Um, and then also in some instances, we've already started to see uh, training and maintenance procedure times decrease um, with the integration of uh, virtual reality specifically. Um, but I think this is all significant because it really lets us know that we're on the right track to providing actual tangible solutions uh, to problems. Um, so is are you collaborating with industry on some of these topics and why is it um... Why is it, do you think it would be important for industry to collaborate with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we collaborate with industry, we collaborate with academia, we collaborate with other DOD organizations. Um, we're really opening to partner with, with um, you know, external partners because, you know, we don't have all the answers to all of the problems. 
I think um, being able to create a paradigm shift in the way that the Air Force um, completes our mission is huge accomplishment in itself. I think that's something amazing to be a part of. Um, and, and I think industry really has an opportunity here to help us tackle some of the most difficult problems um, that many of them are embedded in, um, in the foundation of our traditional acquisition execution. Um, so, you know, our entire sustainable enterprise has a host of problems that uh, there's no one solution for. And, and we're, uh, we as RSO, um, I think, are at the forefront of this paradigm shift um, with rapidly evolving technology integration. And, and it's awesome to see that there's a space for both traditional and non-traditional partners really to play in this space. So um, I think we're focused on finding many right solutions for many different use cases across the enterprise and not just one single solution. So um, industry has a lot of opportunity to get involved. Um, this is really an opportunity for industry to implement and test some of their most creative solutions um, and really push their technology to its limits, um, which I think in retrospect will really help them better their own project, products. Yeah, you can definitely see benefits uh, in, a, in a lot of other areas, uh, but certainly within industry, within the airline industry, they would have a vested interest in trying to do maintenance better and quicker and more cheaply, you know. Um, so we're just about to the end of our time. Uh, I just wanted to see, is there anything that we've forgotten to cover or anything that you'd like to add? Um, I think I'd just like to add, you know, we're always looking for innovative solutions. Um, feel free to reach out um, to us on our website, on LinkedIn, on any type of social media. We're always looking for new ways to engage. We're always looking um, for new challenges. Um, so anybody out there that has a great idea, please don't shy away from it. Um, again, this is a space for non-traditional and traditional um, industry players or academia players to come in and uh, really show us what we can do, so. Well, Taylor, we really appreciate your time today coming in and explaining to us uh, about augmented reality and virtual reality and giving us an understanding of, of what they are and what they promise to be. Um, thanks again for joining us on Leadership Log. Thank you.